Freak out. Freak out. Freak out. Freak out. Freak out. Freak out. Hello, it's so nice to be here finally in Orlando, Florida. It was a really good, really long ride to come over. We, we tried in 2019, but we had some issues with the visa, but now we are here and we are rocking all over the country. We are having a lot of fun. Uh, we have had a lot of people to come to our and Rhapsody of Fires show. Yeah. It's awesome. I mean, it's awesome. The crowd is really amazing in America, in the States and Canada. Uh, it's a little bit different than in Europe because uh, people here really freaks out at the show. They are really having the times of the, the, their lives. It's so amazing. So we really appreciate that. It's a little bit different. Touring in uh, the US is different than touring in Europe because in Europe you have more... Uh, it's better in a... Um, like the, the green rooms are better, you have showers, you have catering and all that stuff. In, the, in America it's a bit more difficult because you don't have all that because it works just simply because it works differently. But it's amazing to be here and the venues are really good. We are having a lot of fun and I mean, it was a really hell of a ride. You have the best fun when the, when the, whole, the whole day is a, is a good one, you know. So, in my opinion, the best moments are when you have a really big venue, really good venue, uh, a lot of people is expected, like sold outs or uh, low tickets. And when you have uh, a big room, you can uh, stay during the day to relax, to have a shower and all of that. So, put all together and that's the best show. And I would say probably uh, Santa Ana, Santa Ana, California was probably my favorite because it was really full, full of people. There were like 800 people all singing along with us. So, and I mean, all the, all the day was great because we were in a really nice, uh, venue. We had a really big room. We could relax outside. So that was a really, really nice, uh, day. And also the surrounding area was clean, was uh, relaxed. So we, it, that was a really great day. I like when uh, you uh, spend all day gathering energies to kick ass on stage during the night. So yeah, the, that's probably my favorite gig of this tour so far. But all the tour was amazing. We, we, we have had some couple shows really in, uh, in small clubs where it, where it was really, really hot inside. So it was really difficult to carry on with the show, but it, it's fun. I mean, it's difficult, but it's fun because you have like the, the people, the crowd is like one meter from you. So it, you, you can see them having a lot of fun. So even when the clubs are uh, more little and there's um, a really hot room, you have fun anyway. But my favorite days are the, uh, let's say, the big venues ones. So Santa Ana is my favorite so far. We didn't see any anything in California because the venues were really uh, in the outskirts of the city. So we could not hang in Los Angeles. We could not see San Diego. We didn't see any. Even San Francisco, we were pretty close to the Golden Gate Bridge, but we didn't have time to go there because we arrived really late. We didn't see California, and I'm so sorry about that, but I mean, uh, we have spent uh, a day off yesterday here in Florida, in Pensacola, and we had a lot of fun. Amazing. We love Florida. We, I, I can tell that so far. I, w when we will have a day off in California, I will be able to say that as well. <laughs> in 2004, so I was like 13 years old, a kid. I was playing in, a, in, in the band of the school, the music school, in, the, in our town, 
back in Italy, Tuscany. And so um, in that school, I met uh, Daniele, which is the first drummer of the band. So we were like, uh, let's start doing something together because we both liked uh, Dream Theater. We were big fans of Dream Theater. So we started the band and we started playing covers of Dream Theater. So uh, we were hiring people here and there from the school or from the surrounding, surrounding area. And so my, my, the previous drummer was like, oh, I remember that your cousin Federico uh, played piano. Why, uh, let's ask him if he wants to join the band. So I was like, Fede, do you want to join this project? And he was like, oh, I don't know. Well, yeah, 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 let's do that. So me, Federico Miranda, the actual keyboard player, and Daniele, the old drummer, we started playing covers of Dream Theater together. And that was it. We um, changed singers and bass players until 2009. And in 2009, we met Francesco. Uh, we, we did a gig together in Germany for a festival really small festival. I mean, we were playing covers of Dream Theater and just one uh, original song. So uh, Francesco joined the, the band only for that show uh, to help us. And Cristiano, our actual uh, bass player, did as well. He joined just for that, that show. But I mean, it was so fun to hang out together. And so we decided to start writing music together. So in 2010, the one year after the first gig in Germany, we, we released uh, three songs, three original songs called uh, Demo 2010. That was the first uh, thing that we released as a band. So yeah, it came from a, a Dream Theater cover band and now we are doing Dwarf Metal <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> Dream Theater, it's a progressive metal band. They are really famous in Europe, in Italy as well, but they are from New York, I think. Okay. I think they are from New York. Some of them might be from Canada, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. But they are, they are American, yeah, North American. Yeah, it's a big progressive metal thing. We are, we were really, I mean, I still am a big fan of Dream Theater, even if we, if we don't play prog metal anymore. In the beginning, we were like a progish band, in 2010, the first demo is really prog. Then we mm, moved to a more power metal approach. Yeah, because Francesco, the singer, is a, what was and is a really huge power metal fan, heavy metal fan. So we, we united progressive metal and power metal and we created something that, I don't know, something in the middle, but people appreciate it. We, we are really huge fans of the Lord of the Rings and fantasy in general. So in 2014, we wrote a song called The Breed of Durin, which is about the dwarves. And a lot of people, when we released that song, a lot of people commented like, uh, wow, this song really sounds like it's sung by dwarves. A lot of people. And we were like, so, oh, okay, so uh, people like to refer to us as the, the dwarves. Uh, we, we sound, they said that we sounded like dwarves, like dwarves uh, singing all together, no? So we developed that and in 2017 we, we decided to dress up like dwarves. I mean, we had to pick something in the fantasy universe to uh, get inspired for the costumes. And we of course choose the dwarves because a lot of people were telling us, boys, your music really Sounds like it's forged, you know. So that was the the best thing that represented us. So we we decided to dress up like dwarves since 2017. And in that album, Stone Him, we have three, four songs talking about the dwarves. So yeah, uh, that was the Stone Him in 2017 was the album that uh, really got at, got got us into the dwarves. We are uh, big fans of folk music. As, a, as when we were kids, we were really, really huge fans of the Lord of the Rings. And you know, the Lord of the Rings is really somehow related to, uh, to Irish music, to Irish folk. Because it's, uh, I mean, the, the hobbits are basically uh, people from 
uh, Northern Europe, like Celtic, no? They, they are similar to them. So the music they use, it's really uh, Irish inspired. So yeah, we are, uh, yeah, with that, but we are, we are uh, big fans of that and uh, we like to introduce ourselves like as the, the dwarves of heavy metal. <laughs> So that's it. I mean, the dwarves are um, something related to Irish culture somehow, and also mm, to the um, uh, northern mythology, the the Vikings, you know, because the dwarves, the the myth of the dwarves come from the northern mythology, the Viking mythology. Warfront is um, our uh, most recent album that came out came out in 2022. And we spend a lot of time to work on it because we had a lot of a lot of time because from 2020 to 2022 there was COVID, so we were not able to do shows and we concentrated on only on the album. And uh, it came out a um, really serious album, uh, really inspired by fantasy. And it's uh, a little bit more serious than Winter Saga, mainly because uh, probably it was written during the pandemic. So it, we were not like uh, having fun. I mean, uh, Winter Saga was written uh, while we were going on tour, while we were going on to festivals. So we saw people having fun with us. Where Front was written when we were home. We could not even uh, meet uh, we, in the band. We had to record the album while uh, we were in different places on Zoom. So, I mean, it was more serious, more uh, into introspective somehow. So that's uh, the album we needed to prove that we are good, hopefully, <laughs> at writing music. Because uh, Winter Saga, the previous album, is famous because of Diggy Diggy All and maybe uh, some of the people could uh, confuse our songwriting with something simple and catchy and childish, but that's not how we like to do music. We, we really prefer to write serious, song, like, serious songs like you can find plenty in Warfront. So yeah, Warfront is a serious album we wrote during the pandemic and we are so proud of it because it proves that we are not just doing the dwarf thing, mining thing. We, we are musicians, we write music, and we like to spend a lot of times, time in composing, in arranging the songs, and not just throw some catchy melody there. That's it. So that's how we're from, is in my opinion. Next for Windrose, we have a lot really big, a uh, lot of things coming, tour-wise and music-wise. And yeah, uh, this summer we have a lot of festivals in Europe. Then we are uh, coming back to the US. It's not official, of course, yet, but we are planning to come back to the US because this tour was a really great success for us. And yeah, of course, there will be new music as well. I can't tell much about it, but there will be new music next. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't expect this uh, warm welcome in the U.S. We are really mm, extremely proud of of our fans in the U.S. We didn't expect that, and we love this country. We love playing in this country. Uh, a lot of people come to the shows. They buy a lot of merch. They really are in love with us, and we are in love with them. So. It was a really life-changing experience to come here to play and we will have a, hopefully a bright future here in the US and we will come back really soon as I mentioned earlier. Thank you very much for coming to the shows, it was really, we had a really awesome time.
freak out.